Now, if you are going to be doing your own videos and you're going to be shooting them in order to create an advertisement, you probably already have a personal computer and a way of getting audio into that personal computer. Assuming that is the case, you are going to want to have some additional tools. One tool you're going to need is going to be an external monitor so that you will be able to see and monitor what's going into the recording in real time. And this will be especially helpful when you are going to go through the editing process as well as when you are recording your webcam into the final edit. You are going to need some kind of webcam and you're looking at a Logitech 930E. And depending on your setup or configuration, this particular model has resources that run inside of the camera. Now, of course, you'll need to get the webcam that produces the video that you want. And one like this that records in 1080 HD will fit most scenarios that you will run into. If you are going to appear in your video, you are going to need to have some kind of lighting. And of course, you can purchase lighting to achieve the effect that you want. But in most cases, if you want to stay within the budget, you can do a search for something called a clamp lamp. That will give you an option of creating lighting that you can set up as you need it. And finally, you are going to need to have a place where you're going to store the video. And even if you use a free host like Google Drive or Microsoft Office, you also want to have a host where you pay to back up those drives and to keep them in a specific location. One more piece of hardware that you're going to find useful will be if you have to add on different elements to your recording setup on an ad hoc basis. And if that's the case, depending on what your computing system does, you're going to need to have a way of connecting to multiple hardware systems. And if you do a search for docking station, you'll be able to find the appropriate connection for all of the platforms that you have, as well as those that you may have in the future. Again, if you already have a recording device or laptop, and you already have a way of producing audio to put into that system, these other elements will help you as you record videos for your advertisements. You're now looking at OBS Studio, and if you go to obsproject.com, you'll be able to download OBS Studio, and you'll be able to use OBS Studio in order to record video on your personal computer, in addition to being able to record your webcam. You can use this software, which is free and open source, to record videos for your advertisement on a Windows, Mac, or Linux-based computer. You can also use cloud-based tools such as Wave.Video as well as Studio, and you can create different kinds of videos than you would ordinarily be able to create using software like OBS Studio. You can use cloud-based software like Viand and Vion will also allow you to create videos that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to create using desktop-based software. Loom is software that allows you to record your screen as well as your webcam. If you have demonstration-style videos, you can use a cloud-based service like Loom. If you have video hosting that you pay for with a site like Vimeo, you can use their free screen recorder in order to record, then download your video to your hard drive for editing. And if you're looking to record your screen and your webcam and then edit your recording for future use, you can use a combination video creation software and editor, Camtasia Studio by TechSmith. And if you use a Mac-based computer, while you can use Camtasia, traditionally, Mac users have used ScreenFlow by Telestream. If you use the Adobe suite of products, you can use software such as Adobe Premiere, this allows you to create and edit videos within this software platform. And if you're going to use your recording as e-learning content, you can use Adobe Captivate in order to create your video. So the tools that you use to create your video will depend on how you want to create the video as well as what you want to create. And you can use various combination of tools in order to create a video file that you will be able to upload to YouTube. Of course, the most important step in the process will be that you're going to need to be able to edit what you record. And to do that, you're going to need editing software. And you're now looking at the inside of Camtasia Studio. In particular, we are looking at the Camtasia Studio Editor. And you are going to need to have some kind of video editor so that when you've completed recording your video, you can add the necessary touches to it so that you'll be able to initiate calls to action as well as point to specific areas of your web presence for people to visit. 
For example, we're looking at the timeline to this particular video that we are editing. And in Camtasia, you're able to add what's called a callout. That means then that we can add in something like a URL and we can place it any place on the page where we want it. And we can also initiate where we want in the video for this callout element to be. If we want it to be early in a particular video, we can do that. In other words, we're able to place things on the screen and arrange them in the time frame that we want them to appear. And so you are going to want to be familiar with at least one video editor that will allow you to add text and other elements to a video once you have produced it before you upload it to YouTube. This will allow you to make variations to a video without having to reshoot the entire video. For example, we can change the text on our callout so that it is something different for a different kind of video where we are still using the advertising platform. However, we are directing the video in a different way even though we're using the same footage and video. And so regardless of which video creator that you use, you are going to want to have basic editing skills inside of some editing software for your desktop. And again, you're currently looking at the editor inside of Camtasia Studio. However, you should choose the one that allows you to create your videos efficiently. Welcome back. In order to okay. maintain contact through the advertising process, you will want to have some kind of email service provider. We are now looking at MailChimp.com and it is one company among many that will allow you to collect contact information from the individuals that are interested in your advertisement. You will want to select a company like MailChimp and then set up an email marketing list. Typically, an autoresponder company will allow you to send emails, create landing pages, and then put embedded forms on a specific website to capture names and email addresses into a database. Once you have access, you can begin to create different signup forms for customers to become part of your email marketing list. You will be able to manage that list with different segments so that you can determine how an individual came to you and then how you want to market to them. This is going to involve the tag process. And so basically what you're going to want to do is every time someone comes in, from a different method into your marketing funnel, you wanna have that individual noted with a specific tag. And this practice does exist in all autoresponder or email service provider companies. Every company has what they call automations. And this allows you to send automated emails based on the behavior of individuals that come into your email marketing list. It also allows you to send a retargeting or remarketing ad to the individuals based on their behavior. So what you'll want to do is to start the process by selecting an email service provider and then creating a specific list in order to manage contacts as they come in through various advertisements as well as various purchases. One tool inside of most autoresponders is your ability to be able to create different landing pages for different kinds of advertisements and different kinds of campaigns. You'll notice here inside of the MailChimp autoresponder, we can create a specific landing page for a specific campaign and a specific advertisement. For example, in MailChimp, we can specify the specific list that we're going to be working with and we can give the landing page an internal name. We can then begin the process. Now in MailChimp, there are specific templates that are available and the availability of templates will vary for specific autoresponder companies. In this case, we're going to select a specific template. In the case of MailChimp, you can add and take out different elements for your landing page. For example, if what you want to do is you want to have fewer images, you can delete images from the MailChimp landing page. If you want to have a video in its place, you can place the video in an area where you want it to be on your landing page. In this case, MailChimp will allow you to place a YouTube link or a Vimeo link here in this specific landing page. And so in the case of this MailChimp landing page, we can add in the YouTube URL and we can customize the YouTube URL inside of our landing page given the settings that MailChimp gives us. Typically, a landing page template will have editable features that you can place into the page, the text that you want. 
And basically, once you have created the landing page in the way you want it to be, you can then save and close the landing page. Now in MailChimp, we can give the page a title and we do have a specific URL that resides on the MailChimp server. What you can typically do inside of your autoresponder is to connect your existing domain so that people will connect the advertisement with your specific brand. And once you publish your landing page, it will then be ready for you to send visitors to it from your advertisements. One thing you want to do with your autoresponder company is to make sure that there is a connection between your sales system and your autoresponder company. You are now looking at Thrivecart.com and we're looking at Thrivecart because it is a shopping cart that operates in the cloud. One thing that may impact which shopping cart you use as well as which autoresponder company you use is whether there is a connection with the sales system and the autoresponder company. For example, Thrivecart as a shopping cart has a number of integrations. If we were to look at specific autoresponder companies, Thrivecart again has specific integrations. One of those integrations it has is with MailChimp. That means then that when we have a sale, we can capture that individual's information into our existing autoresponder company. Now, as you can see, Thrivecart has already been connected to MailChimp with a specific account. Now, for the sake of this video, we are going to disconnect the account and then reconnect it so that you can see the entire process. What you can now see is that we are going to then authorize Thrivecart now to work with MailChimp. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Authorize with MailChimp. When we click the Authorize button, we're then sent to MailChimp in order to log in, in order to make the authorization. We will now need to give permission to MailChimp to connect to our shopping cart. We're going to click Allow. What you'll notice now is that inside of our shopping cart, we are now connected to our autoresponder company. So regardless of your sales system, you want to find a way to connect to your autoresponder company. What this now means is that when we set up a product to sell in our shopping cart, we can now make sure that the individual who makes the purchase has their contact details automatically added to our autoresponder list. Because of the connection we made, the shopping cart can see inside of our autoresponder company, we can now choose the specific list where we want the contact details of the purchaser added. Now, in some cases, when an individual is watching an advertisement that you're doing in a YouTube video, they will want to click through to find out more about your company. And they can do that by clicking on top of your company name. That's going to take them to your specific channel. And when they come to your channel, you want to make sure that your channel page reflects the image and content you want it to reflect. And if you go to your individual channel, you will see a button here that says customize your channel. And you'll notice specific customization that you can do. So for example, you can set up a video that people will see when they've not yet subscribed to your channel and you'll be able to show them a specific message. You'll be able to show individuals a specific message by uploading a specific video if they are returning subscribers. You can add in a profile image for your channel. You can add in a banner image and YouTube has a recommended size for the banner image which you can create in a graphics program like Canva. If you want all of your videos to be watermarked with a specific logo, you can do that here inside of your channel customization. In your basic information, you'll be able to write about your company and your channel here in this area. What you'll also be able to do is to create links for your customer to click on when they come to your channel. You can determine how many links are going to show on your homepage banner. And you can add links by clicking here in this area. You can control what people are going to see when they come to your channel. So for example, if there are certain videos that you don't want people to see when they first come to your channel, you can exclude them by not placing them on your channel. You can choose what individuals are going to see by adding in specific sections for the channel. So for example, you can include specific playlists. You can include live broadcasts. You can include specific uploads. So whatever you want to do to customize your channel homepage, you can do it with up to 12 different sections for your channel. 
if you have related channels that you want other people to see, you can create a section of your channel homepage for featured channels. And you can move the elements on your channel where you want them to be. So what you want to do is to make sure that your channel is going to be branded at a glance in the way you want it to be. And you can control all of those factors here inside the Customize Channel button. In order to run YouTube ads, you are going to need to have a Google Ads account. So you'll want to go to your favorite search engine and you'll want to type in Google Ads. And you're going to click on this link that says Google Ads. That will bring you to the Google Ads home page. And if you don't have an account, you can click Start Now in order to start an account. Or if you have an old account, you can sign in. Now, if you do have an old account, it's possible that you'll need to go through two-factor authentication. You will then be signed into your account. One thing you'll want to do is to make sure that your YouTube channel is linked to your ads account. So you'll want to click this link that says linked accounts. And if you don't have your account linked, you're going to see a link here and you're going to click on YouTube and you're going to click on the details. Now, in this case, our account is now linked. We're just going to click manage and link. But just for the sake of this video, we're going to unlink the account and we're going to go back and we're going to go to the ad channel process. So we're going to click add channel. We're going to place the URL of our YouTube channel here in this area. We're then going to state that we own the channel. We are then going to click go to YouTube. What you will then want to do is to select the channel that you're going to use for your ad. You're then going to give yourself an internal name for your channel. You will then link your channel to your ad account. Your channel will then be linked to your Google ad account. Once your account status is active, you can then begin running your ads on your Google ads account. Now, in order to track what your ads are going to be doing, you're going to need to set up conversion actions from within your Google ads account. We are now inside of our Google ads account. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up a conversion action. So we're going to click this button that says new conversion action. You're then going to track the area where you're going to be directing people to. In most cases, you will be working with a specific website. A website tracks website conversions, link clicks, page views, and signups. This is how you're going to measure the effectiveness of your YouTube ad. We're going to click website. We're now going to write in website domain. Once you write in the website domain, you're then going to click scan. What you're then going to do is you're going to identify the events that you want your business to measure from within your Google Ads account. So you're going to come down into this area and you're going to select a specific goal that you're going to measure with your YouTube ad. So in this case, we're going to measure the purchase of a product. And so we're going to measure an individual coming to a specific page after a purchase. So we're going to state that we want to measure the purchase and the URL is going to be a specific URL. So we're going to get the URL for a specific thank you page that an individual is going to land on when they make a purchase of our product. And we're going to place that URL here in this area. We're then going to click add. And we are doing this so that we're stating that when an individual lands on this page, we're going to determine that as a specific action that came as a result of our YouTube ad. We can then go into the settings for this particular measurement. What we're going to do is stop the video here and we're going to pick it up from the conversion action details. We're now going to pick it up from the conversion action settings. And once we've clicked into the conversion action details, we can then assign a dollar amount for the individual that lands on this page. We can then determine the count. And so you'll see here that what we're saying is that every time a person lands on this page, that's going to be a count. What we're going to say is that we're only going to count one so that when an individual clicks the ad and the individual lands on this page, that's only going to be counted one time. We can then determine the conversion window. And so what we're going to say is that if the individual comes to this page 60 days, after they click the ad, we're going to consider that a conversion from the ad. We can set the engage view conversion window. And so we can set this up to 30 days or custom. 
basically what we're saying here is that this is the window that we want to track an individual as having them considered to be someone who purchased as a result of our advertisement. We can also track individuals that may see the ad but then not interact with it and we can consider the amount of time that we want that to be. We are going to leave the attribution model in its recommended state. We're now going to click done. Now there are more elements that you can track using conversion tracking in addition to using a manual code. What we've chosen is the simplest to set up and specific purchases of a product. We're now going to click save and continue. What we now need to do is to set up the Google tag. What we now need to do is we need to place the code inside of our website for the tag to work. And we are now going to use the HTML tag or if you want to use an AMP tag, you can use it. In most cases, you will be using an HTML tag. So we're going to copy the tag code. Once we have the snippet copy, we can then head back to our website. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to place the code after the header tag on our page that we are tracking. The code is now placed. We're going to click save and continue. And when you come back to look at your tag, you might see that the status is unverified. If that's the case, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to click the troubleshoot button. And you'll need to go through a process where you're going to open up the tag assistant, connect to your website, test the conversion by visiting the page, and then close the tag assistant. We're going to connect to our page. We are then going to visit our thank you page. You should then be able to come back to your conversions page. You should then be able to see that the tag on the page is working. If you are having problems getting Google to verify the tag on your website, you will need to add in a plugin provided that the plugin does not cause conflicts and it's safe for your installation. Anytime that you're going to install a plugin to your WordPress website, you do want to make sure it's going to be safe for your installation as well as all of your other plugins. Now if that is the case and you verified that, you're going to go to add plugins. We're going to type in tag manager. You're then going to see a plugin here called site kit by Google. We're going to install and activate that plugin. Within site kit, we're going to click on connect more services. We're then going to click on set up tag manager. We're going to connect to our Google account. We're going to click continue. Google will need to verify our site ownership. We're then going to click next. We're going to click next again. We're now going to click go to my dashboard. We're going to confirm our account in site kit. We are now set up on Google Tag Manager. You should then be able to test your landing page and that is connected to the Google Tag Assistant. And you should see this message in the bottom right hand corner saying that your Tag Assistant is connected and that your tag can be seen in your Google Ad account. If you go to your favorite search engine and you search for YouTube ads, you can go to the YouTube ads homepage. What you can then do is you can go to this area that says how it works. You're going to go to this link that says create a video ad. And if you don't know how you're going to create your YouTube video ad, YouTube does give you tools that will help you to create your YouTube ad. For example, you can see as of the recording of this video that there are pre-made templates to create a YouTube video ad. And you're going to see here in this section there will be a link that says try Google Ads video creation tools. You are going to select your Google Ads account. What you're then going to do is go to the asset library. Once you go to the asset library, you're going to click this button that says new. You're then going to click this area that says video and you're going to click create video. You are then going to see templates for different videos that you can use for your campaign. If you find that one of the templates works for you, you can then click use template. You are then going to give your video a name. You can then select your brand colors. Once you've done that, you can then upload your logo. The recommended size for your logo is 1000 by 500. You can use a tool like Canva, whether you have the free or paid version, in order to create a logo that will be the right size for your video ad. 
And when you upload a logo, it will be part of your asset library. You can then select it and then click Save. You'll see your logo here in this area. Now in this individual template, what you're going to notice is that you have recommended sizes for image, but for this template, each of these images is required for you to use it. And if you click this arrow, you'll be able to follow the progress of how your ad is going to look here in this area. Once you have all of your images uploaded, you can then write in the text as suggested by Google. Google will then give you a font catalog, which you can choose the font. You can then select specific music and you can listen to that music here in this area. And once you have everything ready, you can then click create video. You can choose to have the video ad located in video ad storage created by YouTube or your own channel. We're going to select video ad storage channel. Once you complete it, you can either edit the video or you can upload the video. Once your video is ready, you can then upload it to your storage area. And we have started the uploading process. Once your video has been uploaded, it will then be part of your asset library and you will be able to see it here among your images and anything else that you have used for your Google Ads. What you can then do is to click this blue button. You can then click the video button. You can then click add a voiceover. You can then select from the videos you created in Google Ads. You're going to click this area and when you place the cursor in the dialog box, you're then going to see the ad that you created. What you can then do is click Enhance Video. You're going to see three areas. You're going to see the video. You're going to see the selected voice. You're also then going to see the message that you're going to type in that will be part of your video. So we are going to select a specific voice. We are then going to write in the voiceover message. If you want to start the message at a specific time, you can write that time in. If you want to add on to this message, you can click this add message button. You'll then get another dialog box. What you'll then want to do is to click this button to preview the voiceover. Come to the video tutorials masterclass. Come here from Thomas Duncan and Harlan Jackson. They will teach on video tutorials. You can test different voices. So for example, if you want a different voice, you can do that. The voiceover. Come to the video tutorials masterclass. Come here from Thomas Duncan and Harlan Jackson. They will teach on video tutorials. You can choose to turn the volume on the video down so that the music plays in the background and the voice plays in the foreground. What you can then do is to click this button that says create video. And your video will start the creation process. Once your video has completed its processing, you can then upload it to your storage area and your video will go through the upload process. You'll then be able to click the link to see it in a YouTube format and you'll be able to see your video playing. And the new video with the voiceover will then be available here in your asset library to be used for your ad campaign. Now, in addition to the Google ad creation tool and those mentioned earlier in the course, there are other recommended resources by YouTube ads. You can go to this resources section. You can then go to this creative resources tab. YouTube will recommend specific formats and structures for your video in this video techniques link. You'll also see an element here that says find a creative partner. In this area, if you want to outsource your ad creation, you can work with these featured partners. What you'll also see are do-it-yourself platforms where you can create your video, make it look professional without having the expense of hiring the process out. As of the recording of this video, there are five do-it-yourself platforms and there are 12 professionals to whom you can outsource the process. If you want to see some of the work done by the creative partners, you can go here in this area that says looking for inspiration. You're going to see their name here at the bottom of their ad and you can scroll through the various advertisements. So you can use any of the Google Partner resources in order to create your video if it's something that you don't want to do from your desktop software. Google allows you to deliver your ad in several different formats. 
And in describing the kind of ad formats that you have available to you, if you were to go to the YouTube ad homepage, you'll see that those kinds of ads are divided into three categories, awareness, consideration, and action. In order to make people aware of your brand, within the awareness process, you can use skippable in-stream ads, you can use what are called bumper ads, you can use non-skippable in-stream ads, and then what are called masthead ads. And each of these kinds of ads are designed to help make your potential customer aware of your brand. Then in the consideration process, you can use skippable in-stream ads. And again, here the goal is to make as many people aware of your products and services as possible. Skippable in-stream ads are ads that run before, during, or after a video plays and they give the customer the opportunity to click away from the ad. Within the action process, you have video action ads and discovery ads. Video action ads do have a call to action and are skippable and run before, during, and after a video plays. Discovery ads basically use images to reach people as they're browsing on their YouTube home tab as well as their watch next feeds. And coming back to the awareness category, bumper ads are non-skippable and are primarily very quick ads. Non-skippable in-stream ads play before, during, and after the video and force the customer to watch the entire ad. Masthead ads appear at the top of the YouTube home feed but do not play during your customer's video. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check the specifications for each kind of ad to determine how you want to create the ad and how you're going to run the ad. You're also going to want to be aware of the bidding approach for each kind of ad as you set it up to go with your budget. YouTube has a tool to help you to find your audience. If you go to this tab that says how it works, and you then click on this link that says find your audience, you're going to come to this page. If you click on the link that says find my audience, that'll bring you to this page. What you'll then want to do is to select the parameters that apply to your business. You can decide that you want to have an in-market segment or you can decide that you want to have people that are related to what your business offers. We are first going to work with an in-market segment. You can then select your category. You can then click Start Now. What you'll then do is to choose the segment that best reflects your audience. Once you do that, you're going to click and choose the segment. You can then add this audience segment to your profile. Once you've added all the segments to your profile, you can then click this link that says get my audience profile. YouTube will then send your audience profile in your inbox and you can download the profile here from this link. Within your audience profile, you will see the channels that the individuals that you will be targeting in this segment are primarily watching. And this will give you an idea of what your ad needs to say and what is on the mind of the people who are within this segment. You'll also see primarily what these individuals within this profile are researching and planning to purchase. What you'll also see at the very end are niche subcategories of the audience that you're going to be targeting, and this will help you in order to create the profile for your YouTube ad. So by using Find My Audience, you'll have insight on the kind of targeting that you will be doing. Now the other way to use the Find My Audience tool is to look at an affinity segment. And when you look at an affinity segment, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find an audience that will be similar to the one that you are targeting. And so what you're going to do with an affinity segment is you're going to select a specific category of people who have interest and habits like the audience that you're going to be targeting. Once you choose the affinity segment, you're then going to click Start Now. And once we have a segment, we can then choose a specific aspect of that segment. And what you're going to see are different elements that you can drill down into. You can drill down into specific channels. You can drill down into specific aspects of the segment. You can also see what YouTube suggests in terms of where these individuals have interest as it relates to videos that they watch on YouTube. And each time you drill down into a segment, you'll have different elements that you can begin to look deeper into. You'll see where these individuals are likely to shop, and then you'll be able to see different segments that you can drill down further into. And what you're getting is an idea of where you can target your video 
based on the interest of the individuals in these affinity groups. What you can do is add different segments to your profile so that you'll be able to look further into them. And YouTube basically gives you these profiles so that you can make better decisions about the ads that you create and about how wide of a net that you'll cast in terms of the audience that you are looking for. The Find My Audience tool is basically designed to help you to find new audiences outside of those that you would target with your specific product or service. And what you are looking for in an affinity audience is to find out where you can appear with your video ad that might be effective outside of the normal channels. We are now going to start the process of starting a new campaign. We're going to select a specific account. We're going to choose our objective, which is going to be sales. We're then going to click continue. We're then going to click video advertising. We're then going to click continue. We're then going to set our daily budget. We're then going to choose our networks and we are running YouTube ads. So our networks are pre-selected. We're going to choose the location where we are going to interact. We're going to choose the language our customers speak. We can choose our inventory and we're going to go with the recommended inventory, which is standard inventory. We're then going to choose which audiences we want to exclude. We can choose whether to add additional links to our advertisement. We're then going to click save. We're then going to give our ad group a name. We can then choose specific demographics and we can choose household income. Now, if we have decided on specific audience segments, we can choose it here in this area. And it's here where we can determine if people have specific interests or purchase intentions, we can include them here in this area. If we want to have people that have previously interacted with our business, we're going to place that information here. And it's here where we're going to choose our in-market segments based on the research that we did with our audience finder tool. Now it's here where we can choose a video or we can create a video in a few steps. And we're going to walk back through this process here in this area. And we're going to stop the video here and create a video. We're going to open this link in a new tab. We are then going to select a specific template. We're then going to click use template. We're going to give our video a name. We're going to choose specific brand colors. We are now going to upload a logo and we're going to click upload. And we're going to choose the files to upload and we are going to enter the rest of our images here in this area. We will then enter the text for our video ad. We're then going to choose our font and our music. We are then going to create our video and our video is now being created. Once our video is created, we can then upload it to our storage channel and our video is being uploaded to our storage channel. We now have the URL for our video. What we now want to do is we want to go to our asset library and we want to create the voiceover. We're going to click create. We're going to check video and we're going to click add voiceover. We are going to grab the video that we just created. We place our cursor in here. We'll grab the video. We'll then click enhance video. What we're now going to do is we're going to add in our video message. We're going to select a specific voice and we can now test our video voiceover. We can now create our video and our video is now being generated. And we now have our video ad. We're going to stop the video here and we're going to come back and we're going to complete our video ad and make it ready for our campaign. Now that your video is in place, we can then fill in the other information that the ad platform needs. We're first going to write in the final URL. We're then going to fill in our call to action. We're then going to write in our headline. You can add in a companion banner and YouTube will auto generate that banner or you can upload an image. If you choose to upload an image, you'll need to make sure that, that image is going to be 300 by 60 pixels. For the sake of this video, we are going to auto generate the banner. We are going to give the advertisement a name. And you can see what your ad will look like here in this area. And you can preview the ad on YouTube. Now we have the sound turned off, but you can see how the ad will actually look here on YouTube when it is going to be played. What we can now do is click create campaign and we can now continue to our campaign. Now for the sake of this video, we're just going to pause the ad group 
However, when you'd be ready to run your advertisement, you can then run the advertisement. You will need to have your payment account funded and then your ad will go through an approval process to determine if it's acceptable for the Google ad platform.